as we met Galnus um, a little while ago, um, he was suffering from being here for 200 years, and something happened in the interim. So I would like all of my lovely viewers to rewind their clocks 200 years as we take ourselves to the outskirts of Seltradot Manor. <clears throat> Galnus, you are um, walking with your party. You have prepared for this. This is the time when you are going to take down Madame Seltradot. Um... But everybody looks a little nervous. The fighter, the cleric, they're in good spirits. But the wizard's a little twitchy. Um, and uh, she says, "I just, I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is this is a good idea. I, th I think, I think that we we should." I, I, and uh, the artificer goes up and puts a hand on her shoulder and says, "My dear, it is going to be all right." They would not. They would not have sent us here if they did not know that we could do it. Uh, you, you, you don't. You don't know that. You don't know that at all. I do know that. Now, the rest of you, prepare yourselves. Galnus, you need to go to the matron. See if there's anything she can give us to help us. You think I'm the right person to send? You're the only one. And uh, he kind of pulls you aside, Galnus. You are blind. If you go in there and the fighter is trying to protect you, she is going to die. You are the only one we can send. <sighs> You'll Fine. find help along the way, I promise you, but you have Fine. to go now. F what? Fine, fine. I'll go. I'll go. Uh, and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll walk up, um, just uh, kind of just passing uh, uh, Borkun. I'll just uh, kind of uh, feel and tap him. <laughs> uh, don't don't have all the fun without me. <laughs> uh, and uh, just passing uh, Corey, I'll be like, uh, just. Try to follow, see if you can make them follow behind. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. We'll be okay, Ironside. You do what you have to do, we'll do what we have to do. Just like we always have. And she kind of um, ruffles your hair a little bit and says, Don't worry. We got this. You sure you don't want your shield back? Hmm. Nah, it just slows me down. Uh, you so read, do I. <laughs> you read a little bit of fear in her voice. I'll take my cigar out of my mouth and um, kind of just pull out my knife and cut off the excess and just here. Why don't Why don't you hold this until I get back? I'm gonna need it. I'll start uh, heading down the path, uh, just listening as uh, astutely as I can okay. to anything they're saying as I start heading uh, on the path back to yeah. the matron. Um, and as you're walking, you know, you can, your gray vision is giving you a pretty good idea of how to get back. Um, and you sense something um, moving with sort of heavy boots through the trees. After you've been walking for about an hour, you sense something moving with sort of heavy boots through the trees. Um, and um, yeah, what do you want to do? You you can hear something that it has footfalls unlike anything you've ever heard before. Um, it doesn't sound like boots. It's kind of like tap, 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 wait. Tap, 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 wait. I'll take the um, 
the kite shield. Uh, obviously not the same shield that you've seen in uh, him in current day, but uh, kite shield. He'll just put it down. It's much larger as it was given to him by a Goliath and kind of digs just the tip and a little bit into the ground, pulls his hammer and just steadies and waits, listening for the sound. Um, it's at that point that I'll activate my ability and the uh, the head of the hammer starts to glow, that amber slightly increasing into that rich orange and that heat sheen goes across his armor. Okay. Um, Yoshik, you feel heat coming from the path ahead of you. Has Yoshik been here for a while? Or is he new yeah. to this place? No, I think okay. Yoshik's been here for a long time. Okay. So you would have heard about the party that came in trying to take out the matron. Mm -hmm. um, and probably as the spores are speaking to you, they're telling you that that's probably not going to succeed. But they seem to have sent the blind one off by himself. And he seems to be reacting to something. As you see him sort of out of the trees. And you hear the whispers of the spores around you just hush, 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 Galnus, take him to the matron as you wish spores uh, and I'll sort of uh, Yoshik uh, doesn't necessarily need to but moves uh, always sort of leaning on his uh, big oak staff um, and he will uh, approach Galnus take a sort of slight route to, to cut him off along his trajectory. Um, and from uh, the forest, Galnus would hear, I see you're off on your own. Not wise in these parts, but you know that by now. At hearing this, immediately I'll shift the shield, kind of digging up some dirt as I do, and point my hammer out. Stay where you are. Identify yourself. Go back. Do. I'm uh I'll take a couple steps back. I was called Yoshik once. Not much use for names here. Are you here for your pound of flesh? Because my oh. friends are down the road. They'll be here in a moment. I hear you're on your way to the matron. Thought you might use a uh travel buddy. Travel buddy, travel buddy, you travel together. Don't be alone. Don't be alone, Galnus. Do I hear that? Yes. Um, immediately, I'm going to start spinning, trying to isolate it, and more than likely uh, grabbing a die. Well, a two. Um, I'll actually fall back. Um, shield kind of still pulled up over me with my hammer out. Um... Obviously, okay. having can you roll trips. a wisdom save for me? I can do that. That'll be a twelve. Okay. Um, you like start to stumble back, but then you take a deep breath in, and you kind of feel you've felt the spores in this place before. That sort of stagnant death smell, but the smell that enters your nose now is different. It's very similar, but it's different. And as you breathe in and you're looking around, you calm and your body sort of relaxes. And you don't really feel the need to be defensive anymore. This is a friend. Why were you ever angry in the first place? Anger has no place here. Um, and Yoshik, your... Um, Spore power activates and casts calm emotion on Galnus, and you can see his hammer drop. Um, Dwarf, he is not anymore. He is under the effects of calm emotion. He okay. is nothing. Okay. Oh no, I sent that because you were like, he's there's no anger. I'm like, he he has no yeah. anger right now. Yeah, he, well, he didn't he's before. Not, either. He's not anything now. He's he's calm. <laughs> there we go. I promise, I mean you no harm. Okay. Do you have anything to drink? Uh, uh, 
I got some infused water. What's it infused with? Uh, oyster mushroom, mainly. A uh, couple other thrown in for flavor and, and vitamins as well. Uh, no, no. You need a sip? No, that sounds terrible. Not everyone's choice, I understand. Do you have regular water? Oh. Maybe in my folds here somewhere. Uh, and he's just wearing like a bunch of ratty rags over uh, some leather armor. Um, and he starts digging through. Ah, here we go. Regular water flask. Drink up, friend. And I'll reach out for it. A little unsure. Just eventually taking it. Thanks. Yeah. Happy to help. Why are you here? Spore sent me. Told me there was someone in need of aid. And when you say the spore sent me, he'll reach for his face and just feel his eyes and be like, I don't think I want... I don't think I want what the spores have anymore. Fair enough. I've learned in my time here that uh, there's good spores and there's bad spores. I'm not a big fan of the bad spores either, but uh, rest assured, it was the good spores that sent me. Okay. If you say so. What do you want? To help. Uh, I take it you're familiar with the matron, seeing as you're on your way to her. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it won't be quite so bad that way. Right. Her and I don't do a uh, lot of business, per se, but um, we've got a understanding of sorts. I try and look out for any folks that uh, she's working with. Okay. And I'm going to reach out and start just kind of feeling on you, uh, like feeling your arms, like... Mm -hmm. Can you see me? Oh, yeah, I can I can see you. Hmm. What did it take from you? Uh, well, depends on who you ask. Myself, I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, some folks have told me I'm a little strange. You know, I've never seen through eyes like yours. Maybe I can give it a shot. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, uh, Yoshik puts a hand on Galnus's shoulder uh, as you're grabbing him. Uh, and I'm going to activate uh, the Eldritch Invocation Gaze of Two Minds to perceive through Galnus's senses. Okay. Um, you, you do not have Galnus's spore power. So mm -hmm. you lose the ability to see. Okay. Mm. Interesting. What's I in take it you can see a little more than than this. You are blind as a bat, aren't you? Well, no. Bats are probably probably better. Mm. Yeah. Something to do with that clicking noise they make. I'm not a good impressionist. And as you uh, as you make that noise, um, Yoshik, now you're starting to hear that the three clicks and then heavy heavy footfall that Galnus heard before. Because you move silently, you were not the one making that noise. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Sounds like something's closing in, friend. We might want to be ready. I'll reach down and pick up my hammer. And I'll just start focusing and, and seeing if I can uh, identify where it is. All right. Um, it appears to be coming from the path ahead of you. 
I'll just point with the shield kind of sideways like it's coming from that way. Hmm. Shoot, your sight might be better than mine. Uh, I'm going to stop using my uh, Gaze of Two okay. Lines uh, feature. All right, so you see walking... Well, I'll let them decide in what manner they are walking, but you see that the click, the step, is not something skittering. It's just something with sort of longer toenails. Maybe talons. Cagnan, as you're walking down the road, are you casual? Are you cautious? I'm casual. All right. I'm strolling about. So you lot, you guys see a dragonborn slowly making her way down the path towards you. How far away is she? Uh, probably about 60 feet at this point. So you don't see it. Oh. Uh, you see a, a thin wavy line of something. But um, Yoshi, you do hmm. see the dragonborn. I think uh, knowing, knowing now uh, sort of how Galnus sees... Uh, a little defensively uh, take a step forward um, and say, hello there. Dangerous forest. It is, isn't it? Yes, mighty so. You uh, alone? That's not, not quite advisable. I hope I am. Hmm. Well, maybe you're not anymore. My name's Yoshik. Oh. Good to meet you. Yeah. You've been am here I for a while, friend? Am I supposed to have people with me? Uh, typically, walking through these woods, being alone is uh, close to a death sentence. Unless you're pretty so, powerful. As, um... Oh. As she's talking, you hear the, your, your spores start to circle around your head again. Um, new blood, new skin, new bones, rot, rot, new. She won't last long. Cagley, you do not hear that, and neither do you, Gelnus. Uh, mid, <laughs> midway through sentence, Yoshik just, uh, uh, traveling alone could be pretty dangerous. Quit that. Unless you're pretty powerful. Um. I am. Excellent. Powerful folk hard to come by here. And, uh, often targeted. Where is here, exactly? Oh, you, you're probably new then. We're in the Domain of Dread. The what? That, that doesn't sound pleasant. Well, not exactly. Uh, we're in a uh, pocket of space. Uh, apart from the realms you likely came from. Uh, under the control of some uh, malevolent higher forces. Oh. Not a great place to wander into. I suppose you would have known if you had been sent here on purpose, so... Uh, no. I was, um, well, I walk in the woods every day, and today they led me here. Wow. Dragging after my own heart. Bit of a woods walker myself. Oh. Unfortunately, this is about the worst patch of woods to walk through. Um, and who is this? And she'll look at Galvis. Uh, oh, oh um, gesture. Galnus it was. Uh, yeah, um, Galnus. Oh. Our friend here is on a rather important mission. Oh. I just need to go see a friend real quick. That's all. All right. Where does this path lead? I was going to keep walking it. You said it was dangerous. Yes, very much so. Um, back that way, and I'll point in the direction Galmus came from, it's a big castle. Uh, mm. Would advise staying away. 
not a lot of friendly sort in that direction. Well, there's at least four. True. That is true. Um, that being said, down this way, the way uh, our friend here was traveling is a uh, much safer place. And um, out of respect for the four that uh, he has left behind, personally, I intend to help him get there as uh, hastily as possible. Oh. If you're new uh, to these parts, it might be wise to join. Help you get sure. a lay of the land. Get used to the forest. Things work uh, a little different around here. I can do that. I have nowhere else to go or nothing better to do, I suppose. Excellent. Happy when to do have I you go home? Ah, that is the question. Oh. Well, um, I've just been for so as my uh, the calm emotions fly me. Uh, you could um, the matrons this way, um, and points past you. Uh, she could mm. probably help you. She might be able to help you. She, she couldn't help us. Oh. Well, I will help you then. As I said, I'm quite strong. Strength doesn't seem to be the problem around here. Mm. But I need to move quickly. The longer that I just dawdle here, uh, I don't want anything bad to happen. Should I be at the ready for bad to happen? Uh, my, my friends need me. I need to get to the matron and I need to get back. Oh. Bad has a way of finding people here. Um, personally, I've been here for a little while. I find the best way to survive is pound for pound strength and attitude. And personally, my mood tends to improve when I'm on the move. So how about we get going? Sounds good. All right. Yeah, you see, Tagnan's got this little pouch on, like, a little belt. She's mostly in, like, a million different mismatched robes. Um, and she pulls out of this pouch what honestly looks like a fushigi ball and just starts <laughs> playing with it as they walk. And it kind of glows. Uh, as we're walking forward, I'm just clenching on the heft of my uh, hammer very closely, very tightly. Shield's held uh, close against me. But um, you'll notice as he, any of you try to pass me to get ahead, I'll start to kind of move a little bit faster trying to stay ahead. Oh, I don't think I described Yoshik because he met Galnus first, who is blind. Um, but uh, Yoshik is a uh, halfling. Um, so standing a little bit uh, shorter than than Galnus, uh, wearing just a big tattering of like the approximation of a robe, mainly just cloth scraps and and like woven fibers that have been piled together over a bunch of leather armor. Uh, lots of muted gray and brown uh, tones throughout his outfit, and he's got a big, very raggedy, floppy wizard hat. Um, that that droops almost mushroom like in the back rather than being pointy oh cool yeah and he's got um, a big carved staff that he walks with Hagnan is um she's a black dragonborn um she stands pretty tall and she's also pretty sturdy um she almost looks deceptively like she should be more of a martial kind of creature but she clearly has kind of a, a, a spellish aura about her. And she has this um, this orb that she carries that looks kind of like a crystal ball that she plays with. And she's in, um, she's in this, like, it almost looks like she has a robe on that's been tattered over the years. And so she put a new robe on and it's been tattered over the years. So, um, and they all don't look like they quite fit her right. Um, some of them are, majority of them are too small where it's like a, a robe would normally be flowy and they're almost more skin tight um and then she has some that are way too big and they all kind of overlap on top of each other different colors different styles and that's Cagnan. cool 
so you guys walk down the path uh, to the matron. Um, and um, it it doesn't take you too long to get there because Galnus is moving at speed. And um, even though he is sort of short and, you know, you are about the same height, I think. Uh, Yoshik maybe a bit taller. Or maybe a bit shorter, I mean, as a halfling. Um, but probably around the same height. Uh, Cagnon is, of course, much bigger than both of you. Um, but uh, you guys move with a pretty good clip. And as you get closer to the matron's citadel, um, you see... Knocking on the door, you see a figure. Um, Eluthan. I hope I pronounced that right. Sorry if I didn't. Uh, tell them what they see. Um, yeah, you see, like, um, very tall, um, like, very properly postured, um, this, uh, I'm so sorry, remind me of the, uh, the high elf equivalent. <laughs> um, Luminari. Yeah, Luminari, um, you know, he's got, um, like, bright white, like, very tightly braided long hair, um, and is dressed in this, like, light gray, um, like, three-piece suit that is, like, very well-fitted, um, like, with some, like, rips and tatters, um, and this, like, cape that's, like, half over one shoulder, um, and... Uh, yeah, he uh, he looks uh, lost and confused, as if uh, doesn't know if he's in the right place or not. Okay. Um. So you would uh, you would hear these three people uh, approaching because Galnus is not subtle. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, hello. We all met, friend. We don't know if he's a friend. We don't know that. Every stranger is a friend you haven't met yet. You certainly assumed I was a friend. No, I wasn't nope. myself when you approached. Oh, do you want me to leave? You're here now. You and haven't... so is he. Hello. <laughs> Yes, I seem to be in, in need of, of friends myself. Um, I don't I don't know if I'm in the right place. I'm, I'm here to see the matron. Oh. I'll point to the big structure. That would be the right place. Oh. You know your way around. Been here for a bit. And say the same. I've barely interacted with anyone i uh, i lost someone very close to me i i need i need the matron's help to find her again I, and it has been a nightmare walking in these in these woods alone um, sorry to hear about your loss friend um oh, well hopefully not a permanent one no i'm hopefully. sure it'll be fine that is the way we're headed, so I suppose you could join along with us. If you're strong, was the caveat? No. Or have a strong attitude? No, no. Uh, strong people have a higher chance to survive alone. If you're not no. quite so strong, I'd actually recommend the company even more. Well, time has been difficult, uh, but I, I've been here for... A day or so, and I've... Well, I'm still here, but um, I won't say no to more company. That is for sure. That is for sure. How did Especially... you get here? I'm... I'm not sure. I... I was with my daughter, and, and, and we were... We were taking a walk, and... and... And we got lost, and here we are. 
As you say that, um, the door you were knocking on, you hear a little kunk <laughs> as these massive double doors open behind you. Well, <laughs> seems like an invitation. I'll start approaching and um, use my uh, shield to push the door open more. I mean, it's like wide open. Oh, it's wide open? So, okay, that's... Yeah. Uh, so then I'll just walk in and slowly just start turning from side to side as I'm trying to suss out where anything or anyone is. Man on a mission, he is. Heads down, though, behind the shield like this. So it's obvious I'm not looking ahead. Do the spores tell me anything about our newest edition? They don't. They are eerily silent, actually. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll sort of adjust my robes a bit, and anybody who'd be looking at me, there's just like a thick cloud that that settles and like floats to the ground. Uh, well, I suppose we should be getting inside. <laughs> uh, and I'll, so... I'll follow after Galmas. As the last of you gets aside, Kragna, do, you, Kragna, do you follow or do you stay outside? I'll come in. Okay. Uh, Kagnan being the last it. one in, um, as Kagnan is out of the range of the door, so the door's got to <laughs> slam shut. Um, as they do, Yoshik, your cloud of spores kind of drops. Um, as if there is something here that is keeping them contained. Hmm. And, um, Ten pounds lighter. All of you hear a voice. Well, two of you I recognize, but you two are new. Mm. Hello. And you see um, a woman walking out uh, in a gray robe with a bandage around her eyes, uh, sort of long, almost platinum blonde hair sort of spilling over her head and out of the hood. And she, very much like Galnus, doesn't look at you. She sort of looks past you uh, from where you imagined her eyes would be from behind the bandage. Did you come seeking help? You found a safe place, if nothing else. Well, that would be the first. We need help. All right. Well... I'll, I'll get to all of you in turn. Galnus, what do you need? Uh, uh, Corey, uh, Goldie, uh, they sent me for uh, an artifact, uh, uh, an item, something to help. Um, we're outside the manor. They're outside the manor. I'm here. All right, and she snaps her fingers, and you kind of feel... Everything sort of like you feel a, a weird like pulse across your chest. All four of you do, and um, mm -hmm. those of you who can see out the windows um, would see that the kind of gentle fall of spores has stopped. She says, "There," <laughs> and you, um, the three of you, see her kind of like stumble and like sort of like catch herself on one of the pews. <sighs> that took more out of me than I remembered. Yes. We'll get to that in a moment, but first... Yoshik, did you need something? Or are you just accompanying him? Oh, no, Miss Ma'am, I'm just here to help. Uh, doing some shepherding, as as it were. S found this fellow, seemed to be in dire straits, figured I'd help him along just in case there was any uh, impediments on the road. Well, that was very kind of you. Happy to help. As for the rest of you, I'm not sure that I've met you before. Who are um, you? And she uh, she doesn't really look, but she sort of indicates at you, um, Elithan. Um, Elithan Mafiera, miss. Um, <laughs> I, um, I found myself lost in these lands, and 
I, I, um, well, I, I recognize the forming of an adventuring party like nothing else. I was a seasoned adventurer in my day, but I, I am not used to not knowing where the hell I am or what any well, of this place is, but... Allow me to answer that question for you. You have unfortunately been cursed into a liminal space called the Hamlet. It is a domain intended to imprison someone. Unfortunately, I'm a prisoner as well. But I try to act in the favor of those who are trapped here with me. That's very good of you. I'm... I, I was sent here by a... Uh, by a, a lady thing. Ah, oh, um, Amelia. Yes. Lovely woman, her. Yes, I... Um, I just... I, I came here with with my daughter and we lost each other along the way and I am just I'm beside myself uh, I can't if I won't be able to find her in this place um and I'll I'll do whatever whatever quests or whatever missions need of me I I, I can tell that that these two may need some support I, I I'm or or what um, the matron holds up one of her hands um, as you're talking and like it looks like she's trying to stop you but then you realize that she's sort of scanning with her hand and you see a thin like strip of light across one of her hands and then her palm opens like an eyelid and she starts to scan the walls with her hand mm -hmm. your daughter lives she is in danger No. It seems Providence has brought you and Galnus together for a reason. Madame Seltradot has your daughter. That is... a problem. I, I, I will... I'll do anything. I'll... I'll... fight. I'll... Where is this Madame Seltradot? How do I... Uh, and I turn to Galnus, although <laughs> who wouldn't? Um, we, we go back the way I came. Um, his hand's shaking, so the hammer's moving a little bit. And just we go back that way with whatever the matron can give me. And, and then um, we fight without getting in the way. No, just don't uh, the get, matron, just don't get in the way. The matron closes her hand and that light vanishes. And you, Drake Blood. Ah. Oh. Um. Well. I suppose I'm here for him. And she'll point to Galmas. You see, she's like, again, not looking at you, but you can sort of feel eyes on you. There's little selflessness in this place. But you don't seem to be acting with malicious intent. Good. I don't tend to. There are few who do. But you came here for an artifact. I cannot provide that for you, but... What I can give you, Galnus, is information. Oh, okay. Goldie can use Adam Seltradot was a powerful powerful cleric in her time 
she served a forest god. When she gave up her beliefs, she locked her items of office away in her home. They became poison to her. Find the weapon she must once held sacred in her basement, and you may be able to take her down. You have companions now to augment the four you had before. The seven of you should be able to take her and her unfortunate daughter down with her. Maybe we could save this guy's daughter? Perhaps. Go. I um, haven't much time and I can't hold this spell for much longer. I'm, I'm actually going to pull out an empty flask. Um, do you have any ale? Or cuns out of ale. <laughs> she holds up her hand and your flask fills. Uh, thank you. And uh, we have to run. We have to get back. Um, but we have to stay out of their way. My, my friends are powerful warriors. Hmm. We can help them. And then I'll just uh, walk by. I'll pat on um, kind of like a little bit of like holding the my hammer, but just like shakily kind of just bouncing on. Um, wow. I don't know how to pronounce the, uh, was it Alethin? I believe uh, it was Alayathan. Alayathan. Yeah. Alayathan. Uh, we'll try to get your daughter. Um, and then uh, just as I start like uh, running, I'll just kind of, uh, again, just turn my head towards the direction of Caglin and be like, thanks for coming along. And just, I'm going to start pumping my little dwarf legs as hard as I can Aww. and start running, but... I do have a tower shield, so there's as I'm going, it's like digging into the ground and going and like cutting and leaving the little divot and mounds of you know dirt to the sides as it you know each time it hits the ground and digs in. So um, as soon as you get outside, uh, Yoshik, your spores sort of activate again, and um, Alayathan, the hairs on the back of your neck stand on end as something is wrong here, Cagnan. Like, I, I hesitate to say the lizard brain, but the lizard brain activates and you know something is wrong. <laughs> Galvis, you feel a massive presence move its way into that 60 feet. And um, Yoshik, you hear the spores go, danger, danger approaches, danger approaches, the spider comes. And all of you hear, yes, the play approaches. Onikubo eats good tonight. Will not return to the matron. You will serve my food. And coming down from the trees, you see this horrendous half spider, half creature carrying a big sword in one hand and a bow in the other. Um, those of you who can see, who can see venom leaking out of this like horrible, like mandibled face, as two regular eyes, but then two eyes on top of either eye that are just pitch black stare out at you as you see. Yoshig, you recognize the Duke Onigumo. Galnus, you would recognize that energy in that voice. Alayathan and Cagnan, you see a giant spider monster. You've seen driders before. You have not seen anything like this. Because what you see is much, much larger. There should now be a giant spider on the map. If all of you could drag your tokens out by that wall. And that is going to be where we take our quick break. We will be... So when we left our party, they had just left the matron and were headed back with vital information for Galnus's party about how to defeat Seltradot when suddenly 
descending from the tree line came a horrible arachnoid creature. This music's a little too peaceful for this, don't you think, guys? Nah, we're good. Yeah. Keep, I think keep this that is, on. I think this is fantastic, actually. Yeah. In terms of vibe, see, I'm like the young kids. That's that. That's vibe. Perfect. Vibe. Yeah. The word vibe. There we go. Now I'm ready to kick some ass. <laughs> nope. I'm, I'm out. Can I have an initiative roll from my dear friends? Yeah. Only because you asked so nicely. Your dear friends. Your dear what? friends in another castle. <laughs> mm -hmm. No dear friend here. Uh uh. That'll be a 14. Sounds good. Got a big one, two. Ha! <laughs> 10. Wow. I was not expecting to be this high up. 18. There we Damn. go. Oh, I didn't click my boy. That's okay. I'll add you in. Thank you. Oh, geez. Well, you're all going first, I think. What did you get? Gal oh, a 10. Okay. Yeah, I still think you're going first. Hooray. Ah, uh, no, you're not, actually. Never mind. Hooray retracted. <laughs> Hooray reduced. Negative on the ray. Uh, because uh, Onigumo also got a 10, but Onigumo's dexterity is much higher than yours. Mm, ain't that always the way. In fairness, it's not hard to beat my dexterity. <laughs> All right, uh, Cagnan, you're up first. <gasps> Yay! Um. Well. <laughs> I Cagnan is gonna. <laughs> Cagman's gonna laugh at this at this spider creature. She's gonna chuckle to herself. Um and then what she's gonna do is cause it looks like everyone else is kind of to the right. Is she's gonna let me that's her... Okay. Hold on, it's 20. Sorry, I'm getting my ranges. All good. Spells, spells. I've been I've been away from spells. I don't You're know how good. I don't know how spells anymore. Um actually, I'll just I'll just toss it. I'll just toss it on him. Um I kind of take my little ball and I'm like, oh, this will be funny. And I twist it. Um, and there's kind of this aura that emanates from it and goes towards it and then covers the floor around it. And it's almost like this green kind of acidic color. And then suddenly it becomes sticky. And uh, it's... <laughs> I cast web <laughs> on the spider. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm okay. like, haha, fuck you, spider. <laughs> and she okay. just looks everyone. She looks over at everyone like she thinks this is the funniest joke in the world that she's casting web on a spider. Um, but that's so. There's going to be sticky webbing. I know it mentions anchor points. I mean, its anchor is going to be the floor. Um, so that'll be a twenty foot cube. But I, I mean, she she just focuses it on the ground. So we'll say a twenty foot square um how do i make how do you make squares can i make squares yes i went to search for web for stickers and it gave me a picture of harambe oh very good <laughs> mm -hmm. famous web harambe um okay so it's a 20 foot oh, square there's a web yeah let's say it's a 20 foot square perfect and i put it right right beneath that bitch um and i would like to go ahead and spend a sorcery point um to cause 
Oh, I have to spend three? I'll do it. Fuck it, we're having fun. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and spend three sorcery points to make that a heightened spell. Okay. Um, so uh, he has disadvantage on his save and he needs to make okay. a dex save. Um, or be restrained? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So, I had to look this up, uh, because there's a very specific interaction. He does not need to make a deck save. He is immune to anything regarding webs. Oh, is he? Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I figured there was a chance for that. Yeah, I had to look that up because I'm like, I don't want to say don't do this because I don't know the actual truth. But yes, yeah. they are immune to webs. Okay. That's fine. Uh... It is a very specific and strange interaction. But yeah. <laughs> that doesn't have to do with the fact that he's a spider. <laughs> or well, I mean, it has to do with the fact that he's a spider, but it... It doesn't say, like, ignores difficult terrain while on their web. It says webbing. Mm -hmm. Or, like, web. They ignore. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Do you want to retcon, or do you want me to live with my... I will allow you to silliness. retcon, because I think that even though, like... Even though Cagnan... Th well, I I'll leave that up to you. I think Cagnon would know that this probably won't work, but might still do it for the lols. So I'll leave it up to you if Cagnon would do it because it's funny. I think so. Okay. I think she would. Um, well, and so, okay, so the specifics on the wording is that it can't, it's not considered difficult terrain, but if it's yeah, a, um, if it's with the intention of restraint, does that make yeah, a difference? Yeah, I will, I will do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I would, I would have given it advantage. You gave it disadvantage. I'll do a straight dex roll. Okay. To see if it gets restrained. Um, and what is the DC? 14. Okay. Um, yeah, it's restrained. Nice! Um, it, like, wraps around its feet, and you can see the spider, like, <laughs> what? Yeah! So, it, okay, so, so for the sake of this, so, if I impose disadvantage... He has advantage. It'll be straight. Mm -hmm. um, and then... To that specific So if he yeah. breaks out, it won't be difficult terrain. But it can st it's mm -hmm. still capable of restraining because it is a sticky thing that's attaching to him. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that ruling. I appreciate that. That's good for me. Cool. And I, um, yeah, and I just look over at everyone and give like a very toothy dragon smile. <laughs> okay. Um, Alayathan. That's me. That's, That's a really me. fun name to say. Yes, yes, I like it. Okay. I think I am just going to crossbow bolt this guy. Um, I am going to... Uh, yeah, I am going to... Friending Smite uh wep oh hit with a weapon attack does that include crossbow that deals an extra no perfect next time you hit a creature yes. with a weapon attack yeah yeah cool i will brand you didn't my... used to be able to they retcon to that nice also i would have let you do it anyway nice <laughs> <laughs> Then I will uh, branding smite that. Uh, okay. I think I think Cagnon has said before. If you ask me to do a thing, I'll probably say yes. Let's go. Indeed. Cool. You still need uh, to roll to hit though. I mean, the yeah, DM just let yeah. me use webs to restrain a spider, so I think we're pretty fast and loose here. Let's go. <laughs> I, I do have the DM said for the lols, yes. <laughs> two crossbow attacks. So the first roll to hit is that is a nat twenty. That'll do it. Yeah. Let's go, and that'll be my. Oh man, that'll be. Uh... So your nat twenties are just our max. 
damage. Max, yeah, max damage plus roll. So you do the max damage, like whatever the maximum damage you could do is. Cool. And then you roll. So, ten, plus a d ten. That's sixteen base damage. Uh, uh, plus your dex. Dex mod. Plus the dex mod. Seventeen. Okay. And then the branding smite damage, which is two d six. So that is twelve plus. Holy shit! Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> yeah. Paladin's yeah. getting nat twenties is what ends games for DMs. <laughs> you see, like as uh, like, uh, Alethan like grabs for his crossbow, and before he makes the shot, he like does like a twist back crack and like lets out a deep exhale, and then <laughs> does the shot. Yeah, nice. That's. Uh, not great. It's a, it's five. So twelve plus, well, twelve plus that's five. Still pr yeah. pretty good. Uh, that's a <laughs> lot of damage good. in one hit, and you have another yeah. shot. <laughs> and I well, it is a crossbow. Do you that. have crossbow expert? Um, no, I no, I do have two. Okay, so attacks. then your next shot would be loading the crossbow, because crossbows are loading weapons. Oh, you're so right. Um. Can I attack with a different weapon? We can we can assume that crossbows were preloaded before fight. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Uh, okay, um, great. You're so right. You're yes, so right. I will I allow you to loading. attack. Use your secondary attack with a different weapon. Okay. Well. Which is something I've had a character do. They had just bandoliers of loaded hand crossbows and just boom, boom just throw them on the ground. <laughs> I <laughs> do not have a bunch of loaded hand crossbows. Um. Can I just like throw a javelin at this guy? Oh no. Um I don't know. I completely forgot about the loading thing on the crossbow. Um Oh, this is so funny. I mean, I I did do a lot of damage regardless. Well, that and because you used branding smite, the webs are now on fire. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Oh, wait. I that's what I was that. hoping was going to happen. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> um, web on. Do you have the info for that? Do you need me yeah, to do info on that? Yeah, I do. I have it pulled that? up. Okay, fantastic. Amazing. Uh, but for everyone at home, now that it's on fire, um, any creature that starts its turn on the web is going to take 2d4 fire damage. Yep. Yeah. The web is also okay. going to disappear next turn, but that's okay. I, I can throw a javelin at him if I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Do you got the arm for it? I... <sighs> Clearly I do now. All right. That'll be... Yeah, well, uh, that'll be that's an eight on the javelin throw. Uh, did you roll with advantage? It is I did not. Hey, that's a dirty twenty. Um, unfortunately, that's a miss. Oh shit! Okay, <laughs> wowzers. Um, yeah, you I... you go to throw the javelin, and um, Onigumo catches it and just snaps it in his hand. Okay. Well, that's crazy. He's kind of tough. He's a duke. <laughs> yeah, I would. I, it makes sense. I was going to... Yeah, I'll just say, that was a gift. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> got a loan out on that javelin. <laughs> and... Uh, I'll have... Can I say I'll uh, take a few steps forward uh, yeah. when I went to throw the javelin? It. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because javelins have very short range. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to be within 30 feet to get not disadvantage. Yeah, good enough. Great. All right. Um, Onigumo is actually going to use his one and only legendary action. Um, 
So Onigumo, like seeing that he's restrained, um, takes his second pair of arms that sit underneath his first one, and he pulls up a longbow, and he fires a shot at um, Cagnon. Good luck, bitch. He's going to do his best. Um, 19. Yeah. <laughs> he did <Okay>. his best. <laughs> he didn't even do his best. He did all right. Um, oh, okay, so that is, um, math, sorry, 10 piercing damage and two poison damage. Nice. And, uh, Cagnon, I need you to roll a constitution save for me. Poison is different from acid, question yes, mark. Yes, it is. Great. Okay. Ten piercing. Mm-hmm. Two poison. Two poison. I don't... And con save. And a con save. That's one of my good ones. Ooh. Unless I don't roll well. Eight. <laughs> Um, all right, you are, uh, you feel as the poison hits you, like, your whole body starts to burn. Um, Ooh, you are, that. you are currently under the effect of the poisoned condition, and at the beginning of your turns, you will take an additional d6 poison damage. Okay. And then at the end of your turn, you can take another con check to end it, but... D6. Mm-hmm. Of poison, Okay. And uh, that will be the end of its legendary action. So uh, that brings us to Yoshik. Excellent. Um, so you said beginning of my next turn or end of my next turn? Beginning. Uh, the beginning of your next turn. You, you can test at the end. Right. Uh, Yoshik is going to step forward to be on level uh, with our... our uh, actually, he'll be slightly behind our frontliner here. Um, and he's going to look at the webbed spider, uh, and say, man, I love it when a good friend has a good idea. Uh, and I'm going to cast fairy fire on the restrained spider, uh, <laughs> which has dis disadvantage on its dexterity saving throw to avoid the spell. Uh, it same DC is 14. All right. Rolling with disadvantage. It got a 14. Darn. Well, fair enough. Um, and then the, the web is still lit up with uh, light. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you see, uh, as as he uh, marches forward, Yoshik sort of shakes his body, uh, like leading from the shoulders, and a bunch of spores uh, drop out of his clothes, and he swirls his staff, and as if on a wind, they're guided over to the spider, and individually as they approach, uh, they become phosphorescent and light up the area around the spider. Okay. Uh, and then, um, while also doing that, I'm going to uh, bonus action activate uh, Halo of Spores. Sounds good. Uh, so that will bring us to Onigumo's turn. Um, first, Onigumo is going to take 2d4 fire damage, and then the webs will disappear. So it takes 5 fire damage. And then the webs will vamusk. But, um... It is going to actually kind of hiss at Cagnon. And, um... And as it's hissing, and it's like the little like the pincers are like splayed out and then it sort of cocks its head at you and does the closest approximation that a spider fist can do to a smile and it sort of leans down its upper body and the big thorax or abdomen kind of like pops up and it fires a web at you guys so uh. i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to need um everybody to roll a deck safe oh that's a big and <laughs> Well, he's a big spider. That's a, that's that's a, a big, big web. web. That's a big web. Following uh, my nat 20, that is a nat 1. Oof. Oh, boy. 
The die giveth and the die taketh away. Truly. Poisoned um, doesn't impact saves, right? It's just checks? Ah, uh, correct. Okay. That'll be a nine for me. Or, sorry. Okay. Nine for, okay. Yeah, Next. nine. Fifteen. Nice. Uh, fourteen. Okay. Um, I have a Cagnan, you are able to avoid getting webbed. The Aha. rest of you are... I'm a web pro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The rest of you are wrapped up. Uh-oh. Um, and then Onigumo is going to skitter over to um, Eleathan. And Eleathan, you can see that in uh, he's got the bow in sort of his lower arms, and then he draws two long swords with his upper arms. And just... <laughs> Spider with long swords is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He <laughs> lob who? All right, and then that'll be uh, Galnus. Oh, Galnus, right. You are restrained. <clears throat> so I just need to roll to uh, break grapple. Yes. All right. All right it's a strength save. Uh, that is your action. Yeah. All right. That's going to be a nineteen. Oh, yeah. Uh, you just Hulk burst out of there, but your speed is still halved because the web does still exist. Okay. Uh, so I can still only go 10 feet. It's rounded yes. down, right? Yeah. Ending my turn in it, do I need to break free again next turn? Uh, no. Okay, um, I'll take... Uh, wait, yes. Each creature that starts its turn in the webs... Uh, we'll make have to make a deck save. Okay, but so I'm yes, not. You st but I'm not trapped, or I'm just stuck to the crap terrain. Yes. Okay. No. But it, like, if you start your turn in the web, you'll have to roll a deck save, and if you fail, you'll be stuck. Okay. Well, that's not my problem right now. Um, that's my problem for next turn. So, um, <laughs> knowing within range, I don't think our team really did much, if anything, to. Uh, Unigomo did it. Hmm? Uh, uh, your team did a lot of damage to Unigomo. We did 2d4 yeah. fire damage, yeah. Cagnan burned with web, and uh, Ellie Theron big crossbow. Uh, did a big crossbow. Uh, so yeah, I will uh, start to move out, but I'm just going to say, I know what's wrong. You need a distraction. And I'll start banging on my shield, going... Let's test your fangs on something harder. I'm just trying to lure it in to uh, me. Okay. Yummy me. And then I'll end uh, my turn right. there. I got nothing else. Cagnan. <laughs> Saying your name was so funny. It's like Cagnan. Cagnan. <laughs> I know. I thought it was. I thought it was fun for lizard. He's Caggy. Caggy you all have fun names to say. Yoshik. Alayathan, Galnus, Gagnon. Gagnon. <laughs> I'm Gagnon. I'm from an, I'm from up in the crate. Um. So. <laughs> what is he doing right there? Oh, he's Gagnon. Yeah, he's Gagnon. <laughs> um. Okay. You know. I think it's. James is listening to the Shrek musical soundtrack, which is throwing me off. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> the, the new non-union production looks interesting. Oh yeah. Um, okay. You know, I think it's time for the Cagnet special. Are y'all ready? Oh. Sure. Um, I cast Catapult at third level. Okay. I take my, my Arcane spell. Focus my little fushiki ball and I kind of roll it around like I'm about to cast a, sp a spell and then I just throw it at the spider with immense strength. <laughs> uh, so those of you who are not looking to really can hear like a thump. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> you, see, you see, it's 
like basically like a crystal ball that Cagnon has and has been playing with and obviously is arcane and she just goes fuck you <laughs> and throws it at it at a terminal velocity um and uh that's a deck save all right Which I were you 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 cat Yoshik cast. Uh, I cast fairy fire, but it didn't work. Oh, it didn't go through. Okay. No. Uh, what is the DC? Fourteen. I am afraid that it is meat. Meat beat. Oh no! <laughs> Can I do anything about that? <sighs> no, I already used my heightened spell for my webby. Damn. Okay. So as the uh, Fushigi ball rockets out, uh, it turns and sees it coming and just, like, bats it out of the air with one of its swords, which, you know, because it's your arcane focus, it kind of just swirls back into your hand, but... Very good. Oh, it returns to me? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know you were going to rule it like that because I have other stuff in my kit for, <laughs> for retrieving it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I didn't know that would happen. I've got a boomerang. I mean, if, you, if you'd rather do something cool with it, I'm fine with that. But no, I just, I just assumed that you wouldn't let me be able to take it back. <laughs> well, it was sort of like when, so when I, have, he hit I have misty steps, so I can be like, oh, because it was meat beat. <laughs> because it was meat beat, I'm gonna say that he sort of just baseballed it back to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Perfect. Um, but anything else? Any bonus actions or any movement? Um, I'd like to get out of the web, maybe. Okay. And I oh, I should like have made to, you test. And I also now. like to not be poisoned. Yeah. Um, I took how much? I took a d6. Do you want me to roll uh, the d6, or do you want to roll the d6? You take one one poison damage. One poise. Mm-hmm. Okay. What am I testing? I, Another. I do deck need save? you to roll a deck save to see if you're restrained. Stunning. That's a fifteen. Uh, you are not. Okay. Um. Let's see. Yeah, I'd like to move out of this bullshit, I think. Okay. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm going to just go in a nice little diagonal here. I am here right. now. <laughs> um, And then I would like to not be poisoned anymore. Con save? Right. Con save. Con save. That is a 17. That is unsuccessful. Okay, whoa, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, uh, that will bring us to- You see Cagnan, you see Cagnan <laughs> standing over here. She's like run over there, but she, run, she ran kind of weird because she's like not feeling well. She's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> she runs over and she has this ball in her hand. And she basically gets into like a pitcher's like <laughs> stance. Like you could tell she was ready to throw that fucking ball again because she's angry it didn't hit. Alayeth. So I'm I'm pretty thoroughly webbed up right now. What's what's You are on? yeah, you are right webbed. Yeah, so I gotta not be that, right? Um, I think that all it restrains does is it lowers your speed and it makes you oh. easier to hit. You can still do stuff. Uh you do have okay. disadvantage on attack rolls. Okay. Oh. Well, do I have any? I don't really have any like damage based spells. So, I mean, can I? Uh, can I? Bonus action, uh, shield of faith myself, and then use my action to try and get myself yeah. out. Uh -huh. Cool. So what? Uh, that's a. What am I rolling there? That's a. It's a strength save. Strength save, amazing. That is a thirteen plus two, fifteen. That'll do it. Let's go. Uh, do I move anywhere, or am I just no longer webbed? 
Uh, you can move if you want. Well, certainly not outside of his combat range. Um, you are in. You are in his square. I am. Certainly... Oh, Lord! I made you huge. <laughs> <laughs> huge, Eliathan. Uh, he elf. takes up all nine of those squares. He's massive. Uh, of course, he's a <laughs> he's a big lad. All right, I suppose that's yeah. Action, bonus action. I don't really want to. I'm just no longer webbed, so I'm just standing yeah. on top of the web that was once in on me. Yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, he is going to. Oh, that's sorry, me. go ahead. He's going to go ahead and use his legendary action. Um, he uh, like he looks like he's going to hit you with his longsword, but then at the last second, he dips down and he actually tries to sink those uh, pincers into your body. Okay. It's a good thing you are not restrained, because I don't want him to have advantage on this. He fails. Let's go. Uh, and that will bring us to Yoshi. We'd love to see a big spider fail. Um, how, how strong does, does he look? Does he look very strong? Uh, I mean, kinda. Okay. He, he does look sort of wiry. Like his, his upper half is not like muscular. It's lithe. Okay. But he's um, big, so. True. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, hmm. I'll do it anyway. Um, I need him to make a strength saving throw uh, as I cast the spell Entangle uh, beneath okay. him. I obviously do not want to get any of us in it, so it's going to be centered sort of on the edge of this web so that uh, uh, Elitharin is, is out of it. Um, uh, what is the DC? Uh, 14. Uh, he passes. Okay. Well, uh, he's still, the area is still, it's a 20 foot square, uh, and it is okay. still difficult terrain. Okay. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Yoshik, uh, still in the webs, just like, hey, I can do that too. And, uh, a bunch of grasping plants grow out. Uh, and around. All right. Um, All right. That is my action. And um, fucking, why not? Uh, as a bonus action, I'll I'll cast Shillelagh on my staff. Sounds good. All right. Um, Onigumo is going to go and sort of like shift through these down to here, so he is now out of it. Um, but it took all of his movement to walk that far. Mm. Um, and he is going to put one long sword into each of you. Uh, so this will be against, um, Aleathan. Um, 18. Uh, armor class does not, does not. Okay. And this is against, um, Yoshik does have advantage because you are still restrained. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a hit. Unfortunately, it is a number to beat. Yeah. It is a well, a crit. So, well, um, sometimes they do be doing that. Sometimes they do be. So that will be um, uh, eighteen slashing damage. Ouchers. And then it's going to also try to bite you, Yoshik. Okay. Uh, and that will hit. Alrighty. So that will be... Uh, one piercing damage. Ah. And... Seven poison damage. And All I right. need you to roll a constitution saving throw. Okay. Not, like, great at those. Uh, but I rolled a nat 20, so it's a 21. All right. Uh, you feel um, the poison enter your body, and you can kind of feel your body start to lock up. 
but then you hear the no, no, no of the spores, and it just kind of like you. S Those of you who are near Yoshi kind of see his body sort of sweat out this gross, like yellow liquid, and just plops on the ground. Uh, you resist the paralysis effect from Onigumo's bite. And that will bring us to uh, Galanus. As it is on Sorry. his turn, I am going to use a reaction to uh, do Halo of Spores damage. Nice. Uh, as Sounds he's good. moved into a space within 10 feet of me. Uh, so I uh, need a con saving throw. DC is right. also 14. Uh, not 20. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'll do something eventually, gang. Don't worry. Um, You're doing great. Yeah. All right. Uh, Galanus. Uh, before you start, uh, I need a deck save. 17. You are fine. Uh, you can feel the webs, like, kind of catch you, but where the others are, like, dodging out of it, you just walk. <laughs> uh, do I have my full movement? <laughs> yes. Um, so, I'm just going to be walking out, hand shaking, and the tip of my uh, hammer, the flat, just starts glowing brighter and brighter. And I'm going to walk right up in its face here. I'm just going to say, need a distraction. And I just um, start slamming on this. I'd like to use a bonus action beforehand for my uh, smite, if possible. Okay. Uh, if, if it's just a regular smite, it doesn't take a bonus action. Oh, yeah. You okay. can just do it. All right. Good deal. Yeah. yeah it's the special smites that take bonus actions, no. like searing smite, branding smite. I forgot that. I appreciate. Um, it's yeah, going to no be worries. at a spell slot uh, two. Okay. Because I just like to You have... also don't have to declare that until you hit it. So you can save your spell slot until you actually connect. Nah, no, nah, I ain't doing that. All right. The first one's going to be a 21. That'll hit. Okay. I'll roll damage after I roll the second one as well. It's like Babe Ruth. And, and it's just as I'm connecting, you can still see my shield hand and my weapon hand are shaking. That's gonna be oh uh, that's only an 18 that, that'll miss okay so on that first one let me roll up some damage for you real quick i got 3d8 so it's gonna be 7 13 so it's gonna be 21 uh roll another d8 for me because this is a fiend okay that will be another seven so 21 total I did not remember what I rolled after you said roll another one. So I can't, I, I don't remember. <laughs> That's what we'll say. You're saying 21? Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good to me. Love it. And then for just the uh, the straight damage, it's going to be an additional four, four plus six. All right, so 10. Yep. All right. And um, I'll just so mutter, I just keep muttering, need a distraction, need a distraction. And I end my turn. Those of you who can see, so everyone except Gallus, as the hammerhead comes down, uh, the head of that blacksmith's hammer for just a second turns into a ram's head as it slams into this spider, and then it flashes back. But of course, Gallus doesn't see this. <laughs> All right, Cagnon. Oh, you know. Oh, and I just got dinner. Ooh. And I was going to okay. say, and a James yeah, cameo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's my fushigi. Um, <laughs> just, just James's fist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to catapult this fucker again because I, I, I want it to happen. Okay. I desire it. Okay. We'll hedge our bets. We won't do it at such a high level again, but first level. Catapult. I take my fushig, I throw it. Deck safe, please. Fail. Nice. Okay, it takes three d eight blood bludgeoning damage. Wow. <laughs> as my as my fucking spell focus <laughs> careens into its side <laughs> and thuds against its thorax. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> And I go, oh, nice! <laughs> and uh, um, I skitter forward to eventually grab it. Let's see, 5, 10... 10 uh, how much is 3d8? How much damage does it take? Oh my gosh, I have to roll that. Oh, well. I mean, I'll roll it for you. But... No, I'll roll it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that that was a thing I have to do. 
15. Nice. Solid hit. Um, yeah, not bad. So you move up. Uh, you will also take four poison damage. Understood. I would like to try to not be taking that anymore, please. I would imagine so. <laughs> Thank you. On save. 18. That's one point higher than last time. Um, so, a metaphobia warning. Turn it off now. I'll give you five seconds. All right, Cagnon, you kind of like, <laughs> you feel it. And then just, <laughs> you just throw yep. up this disgusting black liquid. Very good. And you are no longer poisoned. <laughs> Icker gone. Goodbye. Yeah, Thank icky you. Icker. All right. Cool. That's it for me. Um, Onegumo is going to use its uh, action now instead of before, and it is going to try and sink its fangs into Galnus. Um, that will be a 23. Um, as, um, those fangs come in, I just, again, just saying it just, he, his head pops up from behind the shield and just pushes it forward, locking his shoulder. And you see a big sheen of fire, uh, radiate in front of the shield as I cast shield. That'll bring okay. me up to a 28. All right. Uh, that is its legendary action. Aleathan. Hello. I am still within uh, combat range of this guy, and nobody is in a ton of dan danger, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and make two greatsword attacks on the friend, I think. All right. Rolling. That is a 12 plus 5, 17. Miss. Does not. Yep. And that's going to be another miss then. Shoot. Do I have any bonus attacks? Or bonus actions, I mean. No. Unless I want... No. Well. Shit. I... I make two swings. And I miss in my elderly stupor. All right. Uh, you, uh, yeah, the first one just kind of, like, swings and misses, and the second one, as you swing in, you hit the chitin on, um, Onigumo's abdomen, and it just bounces off. Alright. Yoshik, you are still wrapped in whips. Yep. Uh, Yoshik's gonna take stock of the situation <laughs> and his seven hit points, and, uh, is gonna oh. say, <clears throat> Well, folks, there's the way I wanted this to go, and there's the way it's going. Uh, so I think I might need to, uh, take a breather for a second. Uh, he's gonna put his hand on his chest, uh, and he just pops into a cloud of spores, uh, as he casts gaseous form on himself. Nice. Um, I, I would like to not be in web. Uh, you are, you are no longer webbed. I mean, if you're gas, you cannot be restrained, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I have a, a flying speed of 10 feet, so I'm gonna go this way. Okay. Um, I would like I would like to not be touched. Okay. Um, uh, do yeah. any of us do any of us know heal? I I do. Oh, I just okay, needed good. to. It I wouldn't am, have served me well to heal myself and then get smacked again. I was so just paladin like, built to aid and oh, nothing. fantastic. <laughs> and oh. I just didn't know that he was in such dire straits. Oh. I was not paying yeah. attention. No, no it literally just happened. You're, yep. you're good. That was just me. That was just me being curious because we made our characters right before this going, yeah. hmm, you know, we I... didn't talk about that. Do we have I... a healer? Yeah. <laughs> All my spells are aid-based. Yeah. Aid is aid is wonderful. And I can also, I can supplement by healing myself as well. I just got crit, so it almost one-turned me. Um, I meant aid, so... not in the actual... 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but um, is... yeah, I'll be chilling. Uh, that that is my turn. All right. Onigumo is going to sort of like take stock of what's going on, and as it uh, it sort of switches its weapons, so the long swords are in the lower or the lower hands, and the bow is in the top hand, and then it goes to sort of slash like scissor style at both Gelness and um, Alethan. As without even looking, it brings up its upper hands and just Sagittarius shots across its shoulder over at Cagnon. So it's going to be one sword to each of you and then a longbow to Cagnon. Uh, so uh, sword against Alethan will be... Dirty 20. Meets the beats. All right. Um, so that will be be uh, 10 damage. Okay. And then um, against Galnus, uh, that'll be a miss. And against Alethan, I think that will also be a miss. Uh, oh, because God. in melee, wait, no, it doesn't have disadvantage, but okay, it still doesn't matter, it's still missed. Um, but that is going to be um, Onigumo's turn. Galnus. Did you... I don't know if you longbowed me. Hmm? Huh? Did you longbow me? I tried. It missed. Oh, okay. Galnus, you're up. All right. So, quick stock. Uh, was any damage other than mine done to uh, Onigumo? Not since your turn, no. Wait, yes. Um, you would have heard the crack of Cagnon's um, focus connecting with its head. Fair. Um, using my blind, uh, my blind fighting and uh, blind sense. Which way is Unigomo looking right now? It's looking at you. Looking at me. Um, so just feeling it out. Um, I'll, I'm just gonna use my blind sense, blind fighting, and just smile, turn my ha my hammer upside down, and be like, yes, look at the little one. And I'm going to bring it, the hammer straight up into uh, its uh, mandibles. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be, well, that's going to be 27. That'll hit. And so let me, I'm just going to roll uh, straight damage on that one. So that's going to be 7... Plus numbers. Plus six, I think. So it's Plus like 13 six. total. So it's going to be 13. Yep. And then, uh, again, just as I bring it up, just flip it around. And I'm just going to bring it down, pouring everything I have into it. And just say, look at me! And slam it. And I'm actually going to duck behind, following through, and keeping my shield almost arced as if I was preparing for arrow fire. And uh, that is a really good time to roll a nat 20. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I love a thematic net. I, I love it more I lo than anything. I just and, happy you know when what, I Gallus? get one. I know we're time traveling. That was a really cool description. I want you to take an inspiration for when we get back to the regular game. Appreciated. Uh, that I, was really cool. That was awesome. So that's going to be max damage. So it's going to be the eight plus six, and then I have to roll the eight. But I'm also using a spell to uh, slot two spell to smite as well. Okay, so that's 3d8. 3d8. Uh, that's going to be a four, an eight, so we're at 12, and a six. So that's 18, and then uh, I have to roll that's the eight 18. for my my straight damage, which is a seven. Okay. Uh, plus the, uh, the full smite damage, uh, which is 24, and then seven more. All right. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Onigumo is going to use its legendary action, and it screeches um, at all of you, and it is actually going to um, it's going to screech, and it's going to say, you will never make it in time, you blind one. Your family already feeds the worms. And then with a crack, Onigumo falls forward, and its abdomen splits open, and a horde of tiny spiders pours out and runs away. So, 
at hearing that my family is already dead and watching Unigomo fall to the ground, I'm just going to pull my shield back down. Like I said, the tip of the kite shield scraping against the ground. I go, we, ha we have to go. We have to go. We have to go. And I just start running. I don't look at the others. I don't really turn towards them. I just start taking off. So to give credit to uh, to Galnus, um, my goal with Onigumo was that if he was reduced to 20 hit points or less, he would run. In one turn, Galnus took him from 88 to 14. So <laughs> he is leaving. Not a big hit. <laughs> That's Probably. A big old hit. Yeah, that was, um, a, that was a bad one. That was a good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so yeah, yeah Galnus is running. All of you heard that someone is dead or may be dead so well, you hey. can decide if you want to run too or hang on a moment <laughs> and Cagnan runs over to her ball and picks it back up <laughs> all right but um after i grab my fushigi i'm good to i'm good to dash so as you're running you sort of feel the um the twist of uh a teleportation spell starting, and you all hear the voice, you're not fast enough. Hold on. And you feel yourselves teleported. Even you, in your sort of, like, gas form, as you're reforming, Yoshik, uh, you mm -hmm. are teleported. Um, you are teleported to the outside of Castle Seltradot. Uh, one of the doors to the castle is open. Whoa. Never teleported while spores before. I don't want to do that again. Uh, hmm. Upon landing, do I? Uh, how far from the door are we? Can I sense anybody? You're within? like right in front of it. Can I sense anyone within sixty feet? Um, yes, actually, you can sense someone within six feet, right inside the door. A small form. A small form. Mm -hmm. Probably about the size of uh, an elven woman. So I'll start. Goldie? Goldie! And I'll start using the uh, the shield. I'm Because I'm rushing, I'm going to say my blind sense is probably not helping me navigate as well. So I will be using the shield to kind of feel my way and uh, running up towards the steps. So as you uh, say that, um, as you're screaming that out, you hear like a, a sharp intake of breath. And then... Father? Father, are you there? Did he? Father! And Hello? Um, you hear footfalls, Galnus, and you feel the presence run past you. Um, and running out of the door, uh, the invisibility spell that your daughter cast on herself drops. And you see your daughter run up to you and give you a big hug. That's me? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well... <laughs> I I return the hug. Uh, I'm casting healing spirit on myself. I just okay. sit, mm -hmm. sitting with that to uh, get mm -hmm. my hip points back up. Oh, thanks, Sugari. Oh, goodness. Yes, yeah, uh, oh. the 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 cleric of uh, the cleric of Lanaria. She she didn't want me to fight. I told her I could, but she. Dad, they, you were they very were so brave. strong and. No, Very I wasn't. Brave. But they were. Yes. Are you Galnus? Uh, she's oh. talking to you now, Galnus. Uh, uh, but where are they? Where are they? I. I'm so sorry. As the rest of you look in, Galnus, you don't sense any other presence. As the rest of you look in, uh, you see three bodies on the ground. Uh, so now I'm looking intently into her eyes where are they child where are they 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 fought valiantly i the the man the man in armor the man with the metal legs he he was able to no oh dear, he went oh deeper dear, oh dear. he chased her down Gerfried. I don't know what happened to him. 
Gear, yes, Gearfrey, that was his name. He chased her below her castle. He, As I'm going to cut her off right there because I am going to turn around and run in. Okay. Um, How zero of you? <laughs> you, uh, you will actually trip over the armor of Goldie. Is there any body or is it just the armor? Uh, there was a body. Those of you saw it, but you see that the body is now leak into that black acre. Now there's no body. Um, so I'll, I'll take uh, just feeling around just kind of the ornate nature of her. It was elven armor, so very ornate, very beautiful. For those of you that can see, very shiny. Um, and just I'll run my fingers over it and just start reaching out in the area to see kind of pulling that armor toward me, but reaching out to see if I feel anything from the others. Uh, you can feel their stuff, but you can't feel them. Um, so I'm going to start lightly crying. I'm going to pull that flask from behind my back and st start chugging the whole thing full of that oh. um, ale that I got from the matron. Probably feeling, um, you know, knowing that Corey always kept some drink from, you know, Borkon for, uh, because he was a, a lush. I'll take that one and start drinking. And if the DM will allow me feeling the armor, if you guys are looking in, I unhook my pauldrons that are unlike the art, um, very tight to his body, very dwarven. And he just, they fall off and he picks up one Goliath pauldron and you can see his hands almost using heat metal to sear the proper connections to connect them to his arms. He pulls the lions off of their chest plates and then just lightly melts them to where it kind of anises to the metal that he's wearing now, the gold from Goldie's armor. He melts, and I will roll for my damage as he melts it to be the gold outline of his armor. You don't need to. And then um, from Borkun's plate, I take the collar and hold it and melt it onto my armor itself. I'll replace my apron and then taking a great sword in my hand you'll just see it ignite in bright light as I cast Continuous Flame. Place it in its sheath and wrap it around. And then with Goldie's cloak, gather up the rest and throw it over my shoulder. And I'll come walking out to the rest of you now, looking, though younger, so the hair is not as long, short hair on the face, and currently bald, like he's shaved down his head. Um, he just walks out and just doesn't say a thing to you, just starts walking down the steps. Before you walk out, as you gather up your stuff in the cloak, uh, another presence appears before you. Uh, it's very close, and to your eyes, it looks like a young girl. Um, Kagnan, Yoshik, and Aleth, you see a young half elven girl with long black hair in a white dress. She says, oh, they broke so easily, Gelness. You were sent to kill me, and yet this is the best you could do. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get to you. I'm going to take out those useless eyes, and I'm going to replace them so you can watch as I take you apart, piece by piece. Now, more direct to the other players at the table, instead of being shaking as he's constantly been, hunched over, um, just instead of that tower shield scraping along the ground, you watch it glow as if it was being heated in a forge and he slams it down 
bringing it up, it has that flat side that you know. He's no longer shaking. He's standing upright. He takes a, a, a big draw from Corey's flask, puts it down, reaches in the bag, pulls out that cigar. It was just stares right ahead to where he believes the eyes are and says, you won't like me when you find me, <laughs> but you're going to have a hell of a fight. And then he just starts drinking more as he starts walking down the steps. And if it's corporeal, he'll walk around it. If it's incorporeal, he'll walk right through it. It was, uh, it was between you and the door and the other oh. door. So if you're walking away, then it's just, uh, it just starts cackling. You are going to be fun. At that point, yeah. I guess I'd walk out where the rest of you can now see him holding his stuff upright, armor completely changed, great sword on his back, smoking a cigar, and basically smoking the cigar and then switching off to a flask. And, and all just, of you would have seen the little girl. And as I walk past you all, Knowing that you're out there, I'd be like, thanks for what you were able to do. I've Did got we... it from here. And I just start walking. You can stop him and talk to him. It's not like he's leaving. Did yeah. we see uh did we he did we see him fuse all the armor and stuff, or did mm -hmm. he do that privately? Oh, okay. No, doors are wide open. You saw everything he did. So, um, does anybody want to respond to that, or? Because if, if not, there is another story beat that's going to happen, but I want to give you guys time to respond if you want to. I don't think Yoshik would. Okay. Hagen studies him confused. I think she's, she's kind of eyeing the new adornments that he's fashioned, and... It doesn't make sense to her based on her methodology. So she's like, hmm. <laughs> so you can tell she's trying to process why you've done what you've done. But she wouldn't say anything. She's just eyeing you very curiously. Would Elephant say anything? Uh, I think uh, keeping uh, keeping Danny close uh, I think there yeah there is just like a long silence and he says thank you uh, I'm so sorry I hearing that I'll turn around and just kind of move everything so it's just a fist and I'll literally clasp on my uh, my pauldron like this like kind of giving things and then just be like it's okay we're all in one vessel now be careful mm. maybe I'll see you all again one day or maybe I won't but I'll swing a hammer for you one way or another. And then I'll just open up my pack on my belt and just be like, any of you want a cigar? Yes. I'll and take one. So I'll give you each a cigar and then I'll just produce flame. Light the cigars and just... <laughs> Danny looks like she's going to reach for one and then just kind of looks over at you, Lathan, and puts her hand out. <laughs> um, if I sense her, if I do sense her hand, I'll take one out and I will present it to her and say, when you're old enough, remember them. I will. And I will offer it and it's up to you whether you let your daughter take it or not. I will. I will let. I will not let you light it for her. But no, I I'm not lighting it. I'm not. Yes. Whoa, I'm yes. not lighting it for the kid. <laughs> yeah. She takes it and immediately puts it away. Yeah. Um, and yeah. as 
as she does, you feel you hear kind of a of wings and the spores sort of dissipate and landing with her angel wings out and they kind of disappear into feathers. Uh, the matron says, oh, I'm f Oh. I did all I could. I'm so sorry, Galvis. But I'm afraid the thing that is imprisoned here has your faces now. They had tried to protect you from her, but... Don't no try. longer safe here. Don't try too hard. They did. It's probably why have, they sent me away. I have one final gift for you. For all of you. Mm -hmm. I will keep you as safe as I can. Even together, you may not be strong enough for this place, but there will come a time when your strength will be needed again. Until that time, each of you will have a place safe from the creatures that roam these woods. Hmm. Safe from the ravages of time. Gather your strength, and when need comes, I will call on you. And she holds up both of her hands, and now her eyes behind the mask start to glow. Mm. And she holds out her hands, and both of them open up with the eyes, and you see her six wings come out, and her second and third pair of hands come out, and there's a bright light. And now I'm going to narrate what each of you see. I will say one thing. Uh, while she's teleporting, um, when he feels that, like, kind of that aura that she's doing... He'll actually allow himself to cry. The cigar still lit will fall from his mouth. Mm. She only uses five hands because one of them finds its way to your shoulder, Galvis, and gives it a squeeze. And in that moment, your sight is returned for just a moment. And behind her, you swear you can see three figures, two very tall and one a little shorter. Cagnan, you find yourself in a wide open, not exactly desert, but sort of like a, like, um, grasslands. Um, there's a, there's a cottage for you. A terrarium? Um, <laughs> sure, we'll go with a terrarium, but more like a savannah. So you, you said a desert, and I was just imagining like a little holding place for like a yeah, bearded dragon. Yeah, you know, like, like a little, little you, have you, to put, go me, you the, put me in a little tent. Yeah, yeah. You give, give me a little water bowl and a, yeah. <laughs> a heat um, lamp. <laughs> but um, there are training dummies here, um, things that you can practice your magic on. Cool. And um, you see a ring of flowers kind of around the perimeter of this area. Um, and the spores that have sort of covered the ground aren't here. It's very warm here. Mm -hmm. And there is also um, sort of like a trough behind the flowers that seems to be filled with sort of like a black bubbling liquid, uh, which you recognize as a black dragonborn is acid. Yeah. Um, so this is your protected area. Hell and, yeah. Uh, how does Cagden react to their new safe house um i think Cagnon kind of looks around like a little overwhelmed and stressed and um she'll kind of go and peek her head and kind of take in the surroundings um and then i think i think she'll go and sit down in like a chair or whatever's around or maybe go kind of like look pensively at the acid drop <laughs> and um just kind of muse to herself like oh this is no prison i am free love it alayathan you and your daughter find yourselves in what appears to be a coastal area you don't see an ocean, but you hear the sounds of crashing waves, and it reminds you of the mountain steps of home. Uh, the air sort of has that salt smell to it. 
Um, there is a modest cottage here um, with two separate areas, one for you, one for your daughter. Um, there is a small shrine depicting um, the symbol of a rabbit wrapped in a crescent moon, the symbol of Sugari. Um, and um, areas for training and uh, wooden training weapons should you decide that you want your daughter to learn how to fight. Um, but as you also see uh, a ring of flowers around your area, uh, you're in the middle of the woods, so the sound of the sea is a little bit strange, but it seems like this is sort of a, an offshoot plane. How does Aleathan react to his new area? Um, an odd comfort reminds of home. Are you... Are you alright, Father? I am with you. I... Don't know... Well... I, I know now where we are, I don't know... How we ever hope to return home, but... But I am with you. Father, why would we want to return home? We have a great quest here. It's like the stories you always told me. It's it's what I've always wanted. <laughs> Tell me oh, you're story, about Father. to drag you're about to drag me out of retirement. <laughs> that was always the plan. <laughs> and she takes your hand in both of hers. Come on. Okay. Follow her lead. Yoshik. You do not find yourself in an area surrounded by flowers. Excellent. Your area is actually below the town in one of the offshoot tunnels. <gasps> With the mycelium! You can smell in the air the spores yeah. and the mushrooms. But you also feel safe. Everywhere before, even here, the spores felt wrong, but... Here they feel correct. They feel safe. And the voices all speak. Safe. Safe. No more voices. Safe. We are. Oh. And you can see large. It sort of looks like your background. Large. Large mushrooms that give off bioluminescence. Um, and then there is sort of a fairy ring. Around. Uh, the outskirts of the area that sort of cut it off from the tunnels Excellent. outside. Um, I'm going to find the uh, sort of, as I am a a, a slight a slight man, uh, I'm going to find the smallest, like, big mushroom that I can find, or shortest, I suppose, not necessarily smallest. Uh, and he's going to jump backwards onto it like it's a beanbag mm -hmm. uh, and let all the spores shoot out. Um, <clears throat> he's going to take the cigar out of his mouth and, like, stub it on the, the like, skin of his wrist and then wipe the ash off on one of his rags. Sorry, folks. Give him grace. He doesn't know that you don't like fire. Um, and he's going to take the cigar and start chewing on it like it's a dog bone so he can still get the tobacco taste. Um, <clears throat> and he's going to sit like that for a while. Um, but then eventually he'll get up uh, and put it back to regular, like, uh, cigar posture, but still just kind of, like, chewing on the, on the stub unlit. Um, and he's going to look around. Lovely place, matron. But I don't think it's gonna do. There's work to do out there. New folks need shepherding. Um, oh! Uh, and he's gonna, like, sort of dig through the, the cloth folds of his raggedy robes and pull out a tiny little potted mushroom that he keeps with him, and he's gonna set it down in the middle of the room. Take care now, little one. Grow nice and big here. Keep the place warm for me. Um, and he's going to wander over to the edge of the uh, of the fairy circle and say, Hope this place is still all mushroomy when I get back. Um, and he's going to prepare to set off and look for more, uh, more people that have wandered into the domain so that he can guide them. Okay. 
Um, unfortunately, as he sets his foot outside of the mushroom circle, it looks like he's just turned around and stepped back in. Hmm. And you realize now that you cannot leave. Hmm. All right. Interesting little puzzle box, Miss Ma'am, but uh, I will have to put my noggin to getting out of here. Um, as you say that, the mushrooms sort of turn to you, and you can see one of them starts to wiggle a little bit, and as it shakes, it sort of shakes to the side and looks like it's going to fall over, but then one of its roots, like, legs out, legs out, and you see that the mushrooms are actually large biconids. And one of them says, Why leave, Yoshik? Safe. Yeah, I know it's safe, little buddy, and I'm so happy for you, but there's folks out there that are not safe. And I think I could provide them with some help. I sure would love to come back here, but uh, I'm afraid it'd be a dereliction of duty for me to uh, give up my charge. Warden. Get stronger, Yoshik. Get stronger and keep them safe. Hmm. Well, suppose it wouldn't hurt to uh, go over technique and all that. I'm a uh, little stiff from all the uh, sitting around in the forest. All right. You suckers know how to play the banjo? It's sort of just does the puppy dog head tilt as you say that. <laughs> I think that's all of Yoshik that I need right now. Okay. And, um... I'm fully like I'm fully happy for Yoshik to wander out later, but mm -hmm. you gotta wait two hundred years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and finally, we bring ourselves to Galnus. Galnus, you find yourself in a meadow with flowers that, even though the Goliaths would swear up and down they didn't like, you knew were their favorites. It smells sweet here, but you also smell wolfsbane around the rim of your area. And something else. Smoke. And you're able to, with your limited perception, perceive a cottage and an attached forge. I'll take a few steps forward. Just still crying. Raise up, start. Just keep fumbling and basically having difficulty with my latches. <sighs> Corey, help with this. And so I'll slowly walk and lean my hand against the outside of a barrel. It's outside of the uh, cottage and hear a little bit of liquid sloshing around. And I'll just kind of cut my hand in and realize it's ale. So I'll go inside, clean myself up a little, come out with a cup, just start drinking, crying, starting to smoke, and head slowly over to the forge. Um, as you say that, uh, you feel a hand on your shoulder as you drink your first drought. Um, and it is a tall, and you can tell, very feminine hand on your shoulder. And it says, I'm not Cory, but... I'd be happy to help you if you'd like. Please. And the armor seems to just melt off of you. It's undamaged, but it just falls off of you easily. You have suffered more than any living should. But I will keep you safe. On that, you have my word. What are you? Until your hammer is needed again. And feeling the feeling the heat, mm -hmm. and hearing the fire, smelling the coals of it. Are you the fire or the forge? To answer that question honestly, I'm. I'm what came before both. But I'd be happy to help you forge something if you'd like. And I'll reach down and 
feel the armor that was uh I can't get in the way. I need this to be better. And I'll pull up and just you'll hear the armor clatter as it hits the edge of the forge as the the pauldrons fall against the gorget and the uh chest plate and I need to make this look good. I didn't do a good job when I was in their presence. They know. Did they send me away because I was the best person or because I wasn't going to be helpful? I wish I knew the answers to that question, Galnus Ironsight. But I think your destiny doesn't end here. I'll run my hand around, just walking around the forge, and I'll feel the weapon racks um, bare, empty, um, feeling like the the coolness of the steel. Just thumbing my fingers against them, feeling just the how much purchase I get, the smallest sounds, and I'll just go around 1060, 5180. I need to fill these. These racks need to be filled. But first I need to look like I fit in and I need to look like I won't get in the way and I need to fix that. And he points because, well, turns out Blind Sense doesn't tell him where things are. Um, he points in the direction of the forge, but probably not directly to his armor. I need to fix that. Then let's begin. And you feel the presence vanish as the heat of the forge intensifies. As the heat increases from the forge, he's just going to smile and go, so the fire. And he'll grab his cup that's full and he'll just, and he's definitely a little bit inebriated. And he'll go, how did he drink so much? Does it make you feel better too, drinking this stuff? Like, to the voice. He'll drink more, and then he'll just start heating up the armor, and the last thing you would just hear is that hammer ringing against metal, same as the adventurers heard when they first approached the cottage. All right. And with that, we will wrap our one-shot race against time. Players, thank you so much for going with me on this adventure. 